Hi, it's Anthony from Semi Informatic here, and today we're going to take a look at Scanner Somber, which is uh, a game from Introversion Software. UK software developers gave us games like Uplink and Darwinia, and most recently Prison Architect. Now, this game was the result of a little in office game jam that they had um, while finishing up Prison Architect. And we've got plenty of time to talk about it while we play, so let's get started. Alright, so we kind of start out in a tent. We've got some things, water. The, um, the in-game description said that we woke up here. Um, this is interesting. Let's get started with this. So the idea behind this game is that you don't see anything directly. You use a LiDAR gun like this, which bounces a laser off solid objects. And uh, that's how you see things in the game. You can sort of quickly run past and paint as much as you need to... Um, to uh, navigate your area, or you can stay and try and really fill in some gaps. And it'll never be enough. <laughs> this uh, this game is fairly cheap. It can be had for much less than ten dollars. I want to say five or six dollars, depending on where you get it from. Uh, I got it from Good Old Games. Yeah, so this is, I guess, the main gameplay loop, is where you are revealing the terrain before attempting to traverse it. And it's pretty easy at the moment, but it gets pretty hairy later on, where you really want to... Well, not hairy, but you really want to have a firm grasp of what's coming up before you start running off into places. You can see the... Uh, the way this works is that closer things are warmer colours and further away things are colder colours. Eventually you get this whole cave system laid out behind you in a nice blue. I decided to give this a go on the strength of their other games. Um, they do quote Gone Home and Dear Esther in the inspirations for this game, so... I guess if you're not a fan of, uh, I guess, the walking simulator genre, this might not be the game for you. Uh, and I've, there are some little gameplay... I'm not going to say quirks, but I guess... Um, upgrades for your scanner and things like that. But it looks like the scanning mechanic... Uh, is pretty much the game. So... If you, um, if you are looking for something a little bit more meaty, I guess, as far as mechanics go, this isn't the game for you. And here comes the story. Now it's told to you through these little text boxes. Let's get a bit of a move on. I want to show you a couple of the upgrades uh, and then I think I will hand it over to you as to whether or not you want to continue with the game or not. I don't want to ruin too much of it. Depending on, uh, on how far you go into scanning, um, uh, this can either be a very long game or a very short game. It occurs to me that it would be like, see, I've mostly found that there's one way in and out of an area, and it occurs to me that this would be a fantastic game to have a lot of secrets, and I haven't really found any yet. I found a couple of dead end rooms. Notice that cross, because of the way your laser's oriented, I believe it just creates a cross if you just hold it still. A little bit harder to see when I'm not. I'm pointing at something I've already started to reveal. Let's 
far as I can tell at the moment, this is sort of split up into three levels. Let's even get the cross happening. You can see it at the end of the tunnel there. Um, so far I've discovered three levels. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, there we go. These guys are helping me. So yeah, three levels I found. There's this level, which is kind of the caves. Then there's a level called the chasm. And then after that, there's a level called the temple. Uh, and I'll give you a quick look. Uh, and there's a bunch of them after that. So I'm not going to say it's the meatiest game in the world, but I'm not going to say it's the most lightweight either. It falls somewhere in between. you do anything? I have to turn you on? No? You've done what you're going to do already? Alright, here, yeah, so here's our first upgrade. This is an aperture control, so I can really tightly focus the lasers, if I want. Write rude words. Actually, I'm not going to write rude words. Or you can just spread it out and try to get everything. Anyway, let's head up here. Got some story going on in the background. Hopefully we scan those things fast enough that they don't, um... They don't drop us through a hole all of a sudden. We have something here. And the funny thing is you can beautifully paint all these all these little architectural details. The second you turn around, you gotta paint the back of them. <laughs> so this dude in his little default model T pose. Um I don't quite know what to make of him. If you try to scan him directly, your scanner doesn't work. Anyway, let's continue. It can be a little bit of a creepy game at times, but I would hesitate to call it a horror game. Don't really find it scary. Resident Evil, no, that's scary. And I was scared of Amnesia when I played it, but now that I've finished it, yeah. Can sort of take it or leave it. It's still a, you know, tense as hell when one of those monsters finds you. But... Gotta get around to finishing Soma as well. Maybe I'll do it on a stream or something. The problem with that is I have terrible internet. I live in Australia. We were going to get good internet, but a new government came in and decided we couldn't have good internet, and they wrecked it. So I'm due to be signed up for what we call the National Broadband Network, probably in the next six months. Um, but it's still just going to be fibre to the node. We were on track to get fibre to the home, which would have been great, especially for someone trying to run a video gaming website. small part of the sort of a obsessive compulsive part of me wants to paint everything. Now I'm not going to stick around for too long. I want to show you um, a couple of areas of this game and then leave it up to you as to whether or not you decide to play through the rest of it. One thing I do like is that you can really paint something like this. Let's actually get up there really fill it out. And then as you descend into the blue, it kind of starts to look like a solid object. Um, oh yeah. I should probably be watching what I'm doing because from memory, yeah, there's things. <laughs> there's bridges and all sorts of stuff.
I'm going to keep an eye on this because I noticed something the last time I did this. And I want to see what happens. We can't get down there. Now, excuse me for being um, a little bit over the top here when scanning these bridges, but as I said before, I noticed something before and I just need a good grasp on how this area looks to try to figure it out. You can, of course, go in here, but there is a set of stairs and not much else. Which is interesting. It would have been nice if they could have hidden things for you to find. I mean, I know it might not be that type of game, but... And for all I know, they could have hidden things for you to find, but maybe I'm just dumb and not able to find them. Alright. Making sure I have all of these things visible. For a good reason, which we'll get to in a minute. I think it'll be this one. Yeah, that dude. Where did he come from? I don't think he was there before. Well, that's creepy. Yup, almost fell off. The game jitters every now and then. If you try to climb on something you're not supposed to, or you get stuck behind a rock. Like that, yeah. You have to be a little bit careful. From what I understand, this was made fairly quickly. Alright, so we're headed up here. I should get rid of that for you, shouldn't I? It doesn't, it wants me to zoom, but... Sorry about that. You're probably sitting there screaming at the screen saying, Hey, can you zoom please? The game wants you to do it and it's tutorializing you and you're ignoring it. And I was. So apparently we can see ghosts with this thing if the story is to be believed and that might be those Strange little models in T-poses that we're seeing. Alright, well we obviously want to get to that. But we don't know what's... or how to get to that. Actually I do, because I've played this through this area before. I sort of initially painted the edges, trying to figure out if there was anywhere I could jump. Uh, and I have fallen off here, and you do not survive, so let's just work our way around. There's a ledge here, I think. I found, yep. I can see you quite safely around to the other end. Let's open that scanner up a bit so we get a better idea of everything. Yeah, something's definitely going on here. We have to be careful here. This is where I fell off before. Just paint ourselves up some of the scenery. Yeah, that made me dizzy. Okay. Oh, this looks like a fairly standard jump. Keep notice that cross showing up wherever we uh, we go. Uh, 
And this one took a little while for me to find because the edge is very close to everything. And here we are. This thing gives you a burst scan that lets you hit B and then you can just really start to fill an area in. But only in the direction you're facing. It's a bit annoying. But, as you can guess, this being a video game, they're going to give us a reason to use it soon. Be right about here where you're going, can I get down there? How far down is that? You hit your burst scan. You have a much better idea about falling down there. You know what would have been, would have been interesting is if rather than those T-pose figures they had like a skeleton, like skeletons of people who had died exploring the cave. Like what's that old, um, that old bungee game when they were still making games for the Mac. And there was a, a temple, um, in South America and you would go in and, um, German soldiers tried to take it during World War II and you could sort of commune with their spirits and ask them questions. That would be interesting. You just have to scan the skeleton to reveal it. They've already got the ghost stuff in here. That, that would have added an interesting gameplay um, element. God, now I can't remember the name of that game and it's freaking me out. Bungie Mac. It's like a first person shooter. And it wasn't Marathon, so don't say Marathon. Ah. Oh. It had a really cool name. I can't remember what it was. No, I might do this one with the big scanner. See, now when you look back, it's just platforms because this area hasn't been scanned yet. Because the LiDAR gets blocked by things uh, that are solid. It's kind of how it works. A lot of these blocks are kind of looking... Machined? The best way of saying it. We gotta jump by the looks of things. I think this is where... Like they know you know how to use the... The stupid LiDAR thing. So now they're going to start giving you gameplay elements. Imagine doing this in real life and thinking, this is pitch black and I cannot see what I'm doing and I'm just relying on this thing to tell me the ledge is there. God, what is the name of that bungee game? It's going to drive me mental. Pathways into darkness. That's it. Now that I'm on the other side of 40, it um, takes a while for the brain to kick into gear. Right, well, let's get a move on then. So I think we're going to give this up in a minute. Uh, and let you play through the rest of it. You can actually move when you're doing that burst scan as well, if you just want to kind of really paint the area you're in. It can get confusing when caves wrap back around on themselves because you think, am I just going to an area I've already scanned or have I not been able to get up here before? Oh. Well, that looks man-made, doesn't it, over there? Another one of them jumping puzzles. Interesting. Let's wait for our burst to come back. Mm. 
Oh, we're getting a lot more man-made elements now, aren't we? In a lot of ways that burst kind of negates the usage of the of the very tight beam. Alright. It's a temple. Is it a temple of a dog? No. Seattle Grunge reference there. For those of you who are teenagers during the 90s like me. Now, where do we go now? Around here, is this safe? Is it safe? Yeah, it's safe. Hey, the game's turned into doom. Okay, well... This has been Scanner uh, Somber by Introversion. If you think you like the looks of this game and... Uh, the gameplay in it, uh, give it a go, it's quite cheap. Um, if you would like to play some other indie games, may I recommend some other Introversion games specifically? Uh, let's say Prison Architect I liked, Uplink I quite liked, uh, Darwinia I liked as well, um, yeah, but this is one of their latest, Scanner Somber, available on GOG and Steam and I'm sure a bunch of other things. This has been Anthony for Semi-Informatic, see you later.